Hey everybody, how are you doing today? Uh, we've got the podcast coming up in just a minute. I'm gonna check the chat here. Uh, let's see, Evan's here, Steve's here, we've got Coke, we've got Dean, um, Kenny's here, good to see you, Kenny. And um, no, I'm not in blue today, but I am in Star Wars today. Okay, I'm getting everything together here. Lots of different little recording things going on. Um, okay. Evan says I win. Uh, yeah, man, I'm working through my other stuff. I got some blue. I'll wear blue next week, just, just for Evan. <laughs> Not, <laughs> too many blue shirts. Here, Okay, this is going good. Get everything going. We're going to be talking about arpeggios today when we start the podcast. Um, I did ha upload a ar an arpeggio sheet that goes along with the podcast and that is in the Facebook group. So if you guys want to grab that, feel free. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start recording here. Okay, everything's going. Everything's recording. And one last window open here. And we're going to get started. Um, bring up the chat one last time before we get started. Uh, what we do on these is uh, the podcast is in three main sections. And um, in between each, we take a little break, see how everybody's doing, see who, uh, members of the community that are here. And uh, we've got Marty's here now, too. So everybody's filing in. That's great, man. That is awesome. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Get the notes here. Okie doke, here we go. Arpeggios, what are these awesome sounding things? Today I'm gonna to give an overview of arpeggios and how to use them. They aren't as hard as you think. And it can make your sound, your solo sound pretty good too. Ah, no, we're gonna do that one over. <laughs> that was terrible. Arpeggios, what are these awesome sounding things? Today I give an overview of arpeggios and how to use them. You know, they're not as hard as you think and they can make your solo sound great. So stay tuned. We did it. Hello and welcome friends to episode 127 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that will help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. If you're new here, this is our live recording of the podcast. It's designed to be a long form show. Uh, if you're interested in this topic but you'd like it in smaller bite sized pieces, uh, check out the next few videos. I, I break the subject down by uh, in three sections there. So uh, we're talking about arpeggios, and this is a big topic for intermediate guitar players. Uh, using arpeggios, it signals the first steps of of someone who's feeling confident with their playing and wanting to refine it a little bit more. It's a big deal. And those are good problems to have. That means you're improving, you're getting better, and you're still wanting to move ahead. Uh, when most people think about arpeggios, they think of, you know, shredder guitar players, the sweep guitar picking, you know, all those, all those things that, that uh, basically the 80s sounding guitar. It's a showy kind of sound, but they're really neat. When you play them fast, it gives kind of a waterfall of notes. Now that's great, but that's not even close to the best and not even close to the easiest way to use arpeggios. 
incorporating arpeggios uh, in your solos or even in your rhythm work it's a game changer to your sound it's a it's a easy way to just bump you up to the next level so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start from scratch but by the end of the show you're gonna have the confidence to try them out and see what arpeggios can do for your playing okay so let's take a uh, before we start one let's go to the chat make sure everything's working good can everyone hear me okay um, so we've got Evan and Kevin saw it looking like everything's going good all right so I'm gonna go ahead and get on to section one section one what is an arpeggio very very simple much simpler than you would think it would be um, I, they're just the notes that make up a chord I usually talk about the relationship of, of chords and scales by using the what came first, the chicken or the egg uh, phrase, you know, going back and forth. Which one came first? Uh, that one you can't answer, but with chords and scales, you definitely can. Scales came first. They're very easy to make a chord from a scale once you have the scale. Uh, it's so easy, it can be boiled down to one sentence. Skip every other note that's it's super simple uh, we have something called triads and seventh chords those make the bulk of the chords that we play triads are you know your major and minor chords let me get a better sound here more appropriate for there we go so this is c major d major e minor uh, G, you know, all your basic open position chords. Those are usually triads. And they, they're called triads because there's only three notes in them. If you pick apart each of these, I always start with a C. It's the easiest one to, to visualize. So we have, if we take the notes in here, C, E, G, C, and E. Those are the notes that you're strumming when you play a C major basic chord. Uh, basically it's only three notes some of them are double we have C E G that's all you need you play those three notes together you've got your chord now we also have another G uh, we have a, another C an octave and then another E an octave of that other E so that's the first uh, kind of aha moment for players when they realize, oh, I've been playing these chords with maybe six notes in them or five notes in them, but I'm really only playing three. Uh, that's at the triad for those basic chords. Then we have something called seventh chords. And, you know, a lot of people will play an A7 here or maybe a C7 here. And they think, oh, the, the common thing is, is it, there's there seven notes in it? No, there isn't. But the, the, we add one more note to the chord. So there's four notes in a seventh chord. There's many different kinds of seventh chords, but if we take a look at this, we have C, E, B flat, C, and E. So we have basically C, E, uh, the B flat is covering up the G. So we're kind of not using that at the moment. It's kind of implied there. So C, E, we'll think about the G, B flat. Those would be our four notes, C, E, G, B flat. Um, how, where do we get that? Well, if you take a C major scale, the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do scale, and the notes of that are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. To get our triad off of our first note, we skip every other note. So we have, we have a C, we skip the D, we have an E, we skip the F, and we have a G. Those three notes make up our C major chord that simple how about for the seventh chords well we just skip again so that we have four notes total so we have a c skip the d go to e skip the f go to g and then skip the a go to b now if you had those notes c e g b that would be called a c major seventh chord there's lots of different types of seventh chords they we kind of uh take a little uh, t we'll take a um, 
one of the notes and flat them or you know adjust the notes a little bit to get different sounds out of that but that's the basics three notes for triads four notes for seventh chords well what's the most important note in all of those what's the one that functions the most you would most people would say the first note the root of the chord and that's a you know I you can argue that that's good but the one that has the most effect if you change it is the third and when I mean the third the root we skip D and go to E so be one two three we're gonna skip two, the first and the third which is our E note um, if, if we just take it straight from a major scale that's our major sound okay um, but what if we were to lower that one listen to the difference between these two so here's C E G and here's C E flat G I'm just taking the E note and lowering it one a huge difference how does it make you feel the C major with the E is solid people say it's happy with the E flat sad right that's our minor sound so the third of the chord determines whether it's a major or a minor sound that's gonna be more important as we go on it's the uh, when we start to use the rest of the scale to get more chords it's something called diatonic we take the notes that are from the C major scale and we can do the process that we did for the C note skip every other note we can do that same process for every note in the scale let's just take for example the second note this is a D so we will have a D we'll skip the next note in the scale which is an E and go straight to F then we'll skip the next note in the scale which is a G and go straight to A so to have a, a D triad in the key of C it's D F A now that F as you can hear it's a minor sound it's a sad sound so right from the scale right from our C major scale just by starting our chord on the second note of the scale the D we're already getting different sounding chords we're getting a minor sounding chord so we had major and now we have our second chord is minor we're gonna go through these chord notes as we go on um, through each of the notes of the scale in a, in a later section today uh, so let's talk about why playing these arpeggios is worthwhile well first off these notes that we're, we're we're learning about these chord notes when we take our chord notes and strum them all together it's a chord but what makes it arpeggio is an, an arpeggio is we play them one at a time like a linear line we're not blocking chords out we're flowing from one note to the next and as we play them together we get the sound of that chord but we get it in more of a melody sound so when we play these notes one after another it's a very powerful thing we're outlining some very strong sounds when uh, you have uh, early intermediate players or people have been playing for a while and they've been playing solos for a while and they've learned some learned some scale um, patterns uh, you start to think these things and I hear these things as a guitar teacher um, people say I sound like I'm just playing scales in my solos that's a big problem it's a very common problem I've heard that many 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 times I sound like I'm just playing scales in my solos and what that means is 
Just going from note to note, maybe in a, in maybe going up the scale or going back the scale or, or going up a little bit and back a little bit. But which, whatever you're doing with that, there's not a lot of jumping around. There, it's usually one note flows into the next and goes back down. It has the sound of practicing a scale. So when you use arpeggios, you're playing the strong notes of the scale. And music is all about strong notes and weak notes, tension and release. And when you learn a scale pattern, most people don't really think of it that way. They're just happy to be able to get through the scale pattern. And that's great. That's a great first step. But at some point, you start to realize there's more to making a good melody than just these notes. I need to know how to use them a little bit better. And one of the first things you need to know is what are the strongest notes you can play? What are notes that you can play that will give a solid sound? That they, they don't sound like they need to go somewhere. They, they sound like they can stay put. Well, when you learn your arpeggios of your chords, if they match the chords that are underneath, that are being played by the rhythm section, you're playing the strongest notes. You're getting a visual on the guitar of where your strong notes are. Super important. Have you ever been playing a solo and you're playing and playing and playing and then you, 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 there's a note you want to play, you might bend the note or you want to feature that note and you play it and then all of a sudden your heart just sinks because <laughs> it's not um, a strong note. It's a weak note. It's a, it's a note that, does, that, that should be going somewhere instead of being featured. So when you really understand your arpeggios, you're reinforcing the strong notes. Um, another thing, we talked about how visual arpeggios are on the guitar. The shapes that arpeggios make, you can move them around a lot and use those. But you start to visualize, when you learn your arpeggios, uh, what the main intervals on your guitar are. The, uh, and they're common. A lot of these, the, this shape right here in a C major chord, C to E, the little diagonal line, we'll just do a, a two of the notes of the arpeggio there. It gives that major sound, whether you play it off the, the low E string, play it off of the A string, play it off of the D string. Now between the G and the B string, it doesn't work that way. It's actually that shape straightens out, um, but on the B string to the high string, that diagonal line, we're getting that major third. Um, and then here's where it doesn't work quite so quite so well, and then back here. So having that visual of knowing that that diagonal line gives you a major third sound. Uh, when you're playing solo and you have a split second to make decisions, when you have those shapes in your head um, and you all of a sudden a sound, you're looking for a certain sound uh, and they, that comes to mind, it's very important. It speeds up your playing and makes everything sound intentional, even when you're improvising. Okay, so that's the end of section one. I'm going to go back to the chat here and check things out, make sure everything's going good. All right. <clears throat> so, Evan says, heck, they're neat even when they're played slow, just as a little flavor in the solo. And David's here. Good to see you, David. And Coke says, saw this topic and got ants. Been practicing autumn leaves about a week now, learning the arpeggios after the chords. Great. That's a great song to start with when you're getting into the jazz and chord melodies and those things. Brennan he is here. Evan um said hey uh josh is here good to see you josh he said awesome stuff okay so looks like everything's going smooth we're through section one i'm going to go ahead and move on to section two how to use guitar arpeggios well we're going to use them first for target notes. When we learn arpeggios, and you're going to have a sheet that goes along with this series of videos, 
Uh, I'll, I'll play that for you right now. These are the these are the uh, the notes that we're gonna have in our. There's our D major arpeggio off of the A string. So we have four. Uh, sorry, the pinky does the fifth fret on the A. Uh, third fret on the D string. Second fret on the G string. I'm sorry. Fifth fret on the A. Fourth fret on the D. Second fret on the G. Third fret on the B. Second fret on the E. And then fifth fret on the E as well. It kind of outlines a D major, kind of say, I'm sorry, a C major shape right there. Outlines a C major shape. So that is the, the arpeggio off of the first one. The second one we have is an E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A major, B minor, C sharp diminished. Those are the ones that are on our worksheet for today. And um, we're going to get into how those are created and where they came from in a few minutes. But uh, when you're playing those notes, and just playing them up and down, just like I did, it sounds pretty neat at first. But if you use that in a song, it's just like you're playing your scales just up and down. It's not very effective. You're, you're, it sounds like an exercise. Right? It's very kind of exercise sounding. So that's not the way we want to use them. We want to use these to break up our scales. And this is going to give us, when we know these arpeggios, these are going to be our strong notes. They're strong because they match the chord exactly that's being played at the time. The notes in the chord are the same notes that you're playing. All the other notes of the scale are weak. They want to move from these strong notes to another strong note. The strong notes match. The arpeggio notes match because they're the same exact notes in the chord. The other notes you move through to get to these. It's a tension and release. You're playing weaker notes and moving to stronger notes. Or you're making decisions. You could say, I don't want to resolve this right now. I want to have a tension, more tension. So I'm going to hold those weaker notes out for a while, the non-arpeggio notes. And how long you play those, how long you hold those out, how um, determines how much tension is in, a, in, in your line. And then at some point, whenever you decide to resolve that, um, that's when you can move on with your next idea. Um, so breaking up your scales. That's what we're going to use. This is the, really the first way to start using uh, arpeggios. And we're going to try this. We're going to go up to the fifth note of the scale using just straight up the scale. And then we're going to go, come back the arpeggio. So in the key, we're going to do the key of D because that's kind of the key from the example. I'm going to get my looper playing here and just play a little D chord. That's all. Okay, so here's my D major arpeggio. And here's my D major scale pattern four. So what we're going to try is we know that the chord is playing is a D. We're going to go walk up to the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to come back to the arpeggio. That combining of scale notes and arpeggio notes makes a big difference then. Right? That sounds like you're practicing.
So in, that's an easy way to start using arpeggios. That's a, that's a very good first step to go up the scale to a certain point and then come back to the arpeggio. I picked the fifth because the, um, the arpeggio in D, root, third, fifth, D, F sharp, A. So I went D, E, F sharp, G, A, and then went back the arpeggio A, F sharp to D. So we had our tension going forward and we had our strong notes coming back. Why is this cool? What, what, what does it do for us? It gives us reasons to make wider jumps between notes. Listen to the melodies that, of the songs that you like. Listen to those melodies. Are they tight? Do they just go from a couple notes up and a couple notes down? They might for a little bit, but at some point, to get a, a dramatic sound, they may do a, a big jump. And usually it's to a strong note. When you're jumping, you don't want to jump to a weak note. So usually you may jump to an arpeggio note. And so being well versed in your arpeggios, it doesn't feel like you're, you know, searching for a note. It feels like you intended to go to a strong note and make it sounds like confident playing. So it's really important to do that. And it's one of the easiest ways to stop sounding aimless in your solos. It's really all about weak notes and strong notes. And when you're searching around, when you're hunting for the right note, uh, it, tra it, it people can tell, you know, that the listener can tell. Uh, but when you're confident in what you're playing and you know, okay, I'm going to play some notes here, but I've got the good note coming up there and it's So those wider jumps are going to make you sound less like you're practicing scales, more like you're playing melodies and knowing where to jump to, going to the arpeggio notes that match the chord underneath you, going to help you considerably. So how about some practice routines for arpeggios? How to get pretty good at this? Well, the, the first one we just talked about is, is picking a note to go up to going up the scale and back the arpeggio. That's kind of the first step. But say you want to kind of take this to your songs, to, to, the, to the music that you like to play. T pick some of your current songs or the current chord progressions that you're getting used to soloing over and break them down. Write down the chords. Write down each chord that's in the... It just, may, just take the solo section, right? The, the places that you would be playing a melody over. Write the, the chords down, then take the time to figure out the notes in each chord. And usually, if you pick a, a, the key of, that the song is in, most times they're going to come from the diatonic arpeggios, which we're going to be talking about in a second. So once you know the names of the chords that you're playing, map out what each note in each chord is. That's your arpeggio. Those are your strong notes. And start to practice those in your so Take 10 minutes a day to go through those songs. And as you're playing over the background track or as you're playing over the loop, make sure you're outlining those notes at first. At first, just play the arpeggios and hear how they match the chords. Once you're good with that, the next step is to add the scale of the key in as well. So you can go back and forth between those. So that's, that's the first way to practice. Um, the next way to practice them is to take your scale patterns that you already know and go back and find your arpeggios in the scale patterns. We want to match them together. That way we don't have to think of them as two different things. Uh, when you're playing, uh, it's kind of like driving when you're, you're playing guitar solos. You don't have a whole lot of time to think. You're mostly reacting. You see people think, playing solos and they're just, they're having fun, they've got their eyes closed and they're doing all this stuff and it, people say, oh, it, it looks like they're just not thinking about anything, they're just feeling it. Well, they probably are. 
And the reason is they've done the hard work in advance. They've learned where these scale patterns are. They've learned where the, the arpeggios are. They're not thinking about it. They're on autopilot. So if you can take the things that you know already, you've already done the hard work, and find the arpeggio notes in those scale patterns, man, you're, you're in good shape. You're th going to start thinking of them as, as a unit, as one thing not as two separate things. And that's that's the stop. That's where people get hung up. Okay, I'm playing my scales now. Well, I'd like to put an arpeggio in. What's the arpeggio? Here, here, and by that point, it's over, right? <laughs> the song has moved on. So uh, if, you, if you're playing your scales and you can map those to there, that's a, the second way you could get incorporate this into your practice routines. Um, and then another way, we kind of touched on this before going up one and back the other so you could play a scale up um up uh, uh, the chord uh, so, so let's say we had d uh let's see here what would be a good one um yeah let's just let's just do d to a let's just do the d i've got I already got that one there so we got um Or the, so that's uh, arpeggio up, scale back, or you could practice it this way. Uh, let me try that again. Go. So I went up the scale and back the arpeggio. Thinking of them as, as two different devices that you could use um, is the first step to really getting into those things. Okay, that's the end of section two, how to use guitar arpeggios. Uh, we're gonna get into the diatonic arpeggios in a second. I'm gonna check the chat just here for a second. <laughs> Kevin's got three work calls in a row. He's gonna have to rewatch section one. That's okay, man, no problem. Dean says good stuff. Good, 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 good. What's that old Western rock song from the 50s that, that song sounds like? I don't, I don't know, man, I'm not sure. Sure, Master of Nuns here. Hey, man, good to see you. Okay, great. So everybody can hear me. Everything's going smooth. That's good. Uh, we got one more section to go. And um, and then we're just going to hang out for a little bit after that. I'm trying to make these a little bit shorter than I have before. So we're at 4.30 now. So <laughs> Kenny says it's Marty Robbins' old El Paso. Yeah, hadn't thought about that. It's good to see you, Kenny. I'm so happy you're here. Okay. So let's get into the last section. Section three, what are diatonic arpeggios? Well, they're, it's very simple. They're the chord notes in a key across the whole key. And this doesn't just work for the one chord. The key chord. This works for every note in the scale. For each note in the scale, when you skip every other note, has a certain function or sound. We demonstrated this earlier when we when we picked the um, the second note of the scale, which is an E minor. Okay, so in the key of D, just stay in the key. I think we did in the key of C before. We're in the key of D now. To find our triad arpeggio notes in the key of D in one position here. D, F sharp, A. That's our one chord because it comes off of the first note of the scale. Our second note of the scale, when we skip every other note, we have E, G, B. We're going to call that the two chord. And because E goes to G, not a G sharp, because it's only one, two, three notes away, instead of four notes away, that's a minor third. So we're gonna call that an E minor triad. So the two chord is E minor. So our third note of the scale is F sharp. If we skip every other note, we have F sharp, A, C sharp. Now, if F sharp went to A sharp, 
it would be major, but it doesn't. It goes to A. So F sharp, G, G sharp, A. That's three notes, this three fret distance. So that's another minor third. So that is F sharp minor. Now let's go to the next one of the scale, which is G. G, B, D. And that sounds, you can hear it sounds like a major chord. The next note of the scale, A, C sharp, E. That's an A major chord. <clears throat> so now we have B, D, F sharp. If it was B, D sharp, F sharp, it would be major, but it's not. It's a minor sound. Now here we have our the most tense sound in the in the diatonic scale, and that's that is C sharp E G. And that's a diminished, that's a minor third, three frets, and then another three frets between the next one. So it gives us our diminished sound. That's the most tense. It's going to lead us to our resolving sound, which is the octave of our D major, D F sharp A. So we just <clears throat> so we just mapped each chord, each note of the scale, and gave it its own chord. Now sometimes they're major, sometimes they're minor. It depends on where the notes land in the scale. But when you map them all out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and each one has a specific major or minor function, these are the chords that sound good together. Why? Because they perfectly match the scale. Because they come from the scale. They're the chord notes in the key. Okay? Um, and we had the, if, if you were playing music in a chord sense, if you were songwriting and you needed to find some chords that sound good together, these are generally the first chords that you would try they'll work perfectly because the, the the main scale that they all come from you can play that scale over top of all of them move back and forth between them and you have the sound of a key okay so we also have triads and seventh chords in diatonic ar arpeggios let me fix this just for a second so we just did triads okay but what if we kept going on? Skip one, so D skips one to F sharp, skips one to A, skips another one, A, B, C sharp. So what if we added C sharp to that? Very different sound than just the major triad. This is the major seventh chord. The major seventh chord is a very pretty sound. It has a little bit of a, a tense sound there at the end. Because we, that note that we just added is a half step away from the root, so it's got a little bit of a rub to it. You hear it in a lot of songs, though. Very cool, right? So we can do that. We've, we've now taken our triad and made it a seventh chord by doing another jump across the scale. We can do that for each one. That's a E minor seventh sound. sharp minor seventh, um, G major seventh. You can do that across for each note of the scale. Jump one extra time and get the notes for your seventh chords. So we have the chord notes in a key. Um, we, we know that, that this process works. You can do it over every note that's in the scale. Um, and now we can do it in two ways. We can have a triad, which is three notes, or we can jump and add an extra note that will give, our, give us our seventh chords. Um, so to get us started, I uh, uploaded to the Facebook group a, a um, tab, also have the standard notation on it as well, of all of our D major diatonic arpeggios. And I wanted to find the set of arpeggios that was the easiest to see. Now when you play them all in position, like I did right there, it's very difficult to see at first. 
Um, but I want people to be able to try this out and get started with these. So the one I did was uh, I started on a D major scale just on one string. From the third fret up to the 17th fret. And on each note of, of, the, of the major scale, I built an arpeggio over that. And when we do it this way, it's very easy to see all the different shapes of the strong notes. So th that's where I'd like for you to start if you haven't had any, uh, any uh, experience with arpeggios. Uh, I would like to get that sound in your ears first. And I, I also would like to, you to visualize what they look like in relationship to the scales and all that. And so I think this is the best way to start. So head on over to the Facebook group. Uh, you can join in and um, I've already uploaded it there, but I may pin it to the top of the group so it's really easy to get to for a while. Okay, so what's the next step after this? Well, the next step is trying them in position like I did here before. Taking your five major scale patterns, if you've had those, uh, and trying to find all of your arpeggio notes in each of the patterns. They're gonna be a little bit different depending on which pattern that you're in. So that's the next step I would take after uh, learning the, this, the patterns on that worksheet. So go ahead over to playguitargroup.com again, check, get the PDF. Um, some other things before we, we finish up today, uh, a lot of the members of the community, uh, when we got together this weekend, um, I had brought up, uh, you know, end of summer goals. What are we gonna do? We've got three months um, of summertime, and a lot of us are gonna be at home a little bit more than a regular summer. I don't know how much vacation time people are going to have. We may have a lot more guitar playing going. So I thought it would be a really good idea to get some big goals behind us, you know, to really accomplish some things. So we're doing this where I, I mapped out what my goals are for the channel and for the podcast. And um, I asked just just kind of off the, the top, I just asked, hey, what if you could do if you could. Um, get past a frustration or pick a goal that you would like to accomplish that would take about three months which one would you pick and we had some really good ones songwriting and writing a solo over um, a, a, a loved one's song and uh, you know a lot of different really great ideas and, and I said okay well now that you have those let's break it down into milestones let's see well what can we do in a month you know what would be the first step and then what will be the next step maybe on the next month? And it doesn't have to be months. It can be weeks or days or however you want to do it. Uh, but we're starting to think about uh, sharing our process as we go through the summer of really getting some big goals. So I just wanted to um, open that up to the, to the listeners of the podcast as well. And if you'd like to share that, you can just send me an email over at lee at playguitaracademy.com. Let me know how you're doing with this over the summer. I'm very interested in, in hearing how you're doing. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call it. That's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player. Also, really appreciate if you could leave a review for the show. If you're just starting or you're new to the guitar, head on over to startheareguitar.com and check out my premium 11 week beginner's course that will give you the foundations you need to move forward correctly. On the guitar, follow me on all of my different social media pages. Links to them are at playguitaracademy.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next episode. Okay. That was fun, man. That was fun. I love that. I love um, breaking into the next level there for a lot of players. It's, it's, I know when I got my arpeggios straightened out, I always kind of messed around with them a little bit because of the basically the time period where I started playing guitar. Um, I started playing guitar in the 80s when that was a big thing. Not so much of a big thing now, um, but I wouldn't use arpeggios the way they did in the 80s now anyway. But 
um, that was fun, man. I hope I uh, hope everybody uh, gets a, a chance to start incorporating some arpeggios in their playing. Um, let's see here. So we had some people had to cut out there. Um, okay, all right, man. Awesome. See, we'll see it, um, Coke. And let's see here. Everybody's talking about old El Paso, right? Sounds like a good arpeggio start, song to start off with, Old Opaso. Yeah, that's it. Uh, David says, great show. I almost understood it. Well, here's the thing. For someone who's uh, at the stage that you're at there, it's a good thing to hear these. Hear these kind of, this is a little bit more um, intermediate. But j just the basic ideas of this, the basic of ideas is we have scales and we have chords those are our two things that we go back and forth and so people put their scales over here and their chords over here and arpeggios kind of blend the two universes together you know and being able to do that really is, is there's a lot of good music to be played when those things kenny says can't find the download okay let's take a look here so if we go to, I'm gonna head over to Facebook right now, and we go to the Facebook group, and let's see here. Mine is under new activity, it's the first post, and says this week's podcast is all about arpeggios. This is the worksheet I mentioned in the show. And it has a little link that says D major diatonic arpeggios worksheet.pdf. And right now I'm going to pin this to, let's see here. I think I may have to, rem, let's see here, removing this. Okay, I'm going to make this the announcement. So I'm going to remove my old announcement. And then I'm going to. Let's see here, make this the new announcement. So it should be at the very top of the Facebook group. I'm just waiting for mine to reload here. So for me, it's at the very top. Okay, so give it another shot there, Kenny, and see if you can find it this time. Um, Kenny says, I just joined the Facebook group. Okay, let's see here. If we, I'm going to let you in if you just joined. Let's see if three people want to join the group. Kenny, I, I have thought that you were in already. Kenny, you're in. So try it again. And I'll, you should see it right at the top. Okay, let's see here. Try it one more time, Kenny. <clears throat> you hadn't been in yet. I thought you were already a member of the group. So, so okay, everybody. Well, it was that was fun. I hope you guys get something out of it. Let me know. Give me a little feedback on it um, throughout the week as we go. I'm going to split these up into some videos and. Um, we got some new got some pictures of the house being built today, which is exciting. Right before we got started, so um, I'm 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 in a good mood. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I hope everybody's staying safe. I know there's a lot of um, issues going on right now, and I, I wish the best for everybody. Um, Kenny says this is a very interesting podcast. I never heard this explanation of arpeggios, and we'll try the Facebook group now. Great, good job, Kenny. I'm glad that you, I hope you start trying them out and you're playing a little bit more. Um, okay, everybody. Well, I'm going to go ahead and um, call it for today. I appreciate everybody hanging out. And um, I hope you all have a great week. I'll be editing videos um, tomorrow, but I'll be available. So if anybody has any Questions or any, about anything, um, let me know on Wednesday. Also, tomorrow I'm getting together the um, 
for the next group of coaching. So if you're interested in coaching or you know somebody that might be, let me know. I'm going to get that together tomorrow and send out the invitations tomorrow. Uh, and then I want to do those first for the people who asked. And then what we're going to do is um, I'm going to take about like 10 to 12. So uh, I've, I'll open it up for the for the podcast a little bit later. Uh, maybe next week I'll fill out the rest of them there. So Kenny got the PDF. Awesome. Great. And David says, weather it weather's good in Florida. So hope build a speedy. Yeah, and the pictures with the sky just looked beautiful. Man, so looked like the weather was doing doing good there. So Kevin says, great show. Thank you, Kevin. Evan says, good show, Lee. Thank you, Evan. And David said, good show. Awesome. All right. And Josh said, awesome show, Lee. Great stuff. It's great to hang out with you guys, man. I look forward to hanging out with you next weekend, too, if you guys have some time. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and say bye-bye. And um, like I said, get in touch with me if, if there's anything I can do for you. See you soon.